What's going on, fellas? Um, I'm doing my second video for the day. Uh, I put up a community post a couple days ago asking you guys what you wanted to see as far as video topics. I might fiddle with the question you asked to make it maybe a little bit more clickable or make it maybe apply to a wider variety of people, but I'm gonna try to work my way through most of these. Uh, the first one I was asked is, uh, how to build your legs if you hate squatting. You absolutely can't stand it. So we're gonna come at this from two perspectives. The first is a bodybuilding, so a purely hypertrophy perspective. And then the second is a strength perspective. And the strength one gets very muddled, whether we're talking about kind of explosive strength, like jumping or sprinting, or more kind of traditional views of strength, uh, such as what might be required more commonly in a strongman contest, for example. Um, so first from the bodybuilding perspective, can you build big legs without squatting? Yes, absolutely you can, right? As long as we're training the muscles through a full range of motion uh, with sufficient volumes, intensities, and frequencies, we're going to see appreciable hypertrophy. So while it is helpful to squat, you don't need it. Absolutely, I don't think that's a claim you can make. If we have a squat patterned machine, right, whether it be a hack squat, a pendulum squat, a V squat, a belt squat, or a leg press through a full range of motion, maybe some unilateral squat pattern work in walking lunges or split squats, and we have some leg extensions, just applying these motions at adequate frequencies, intensities, and volumes uh, will be enough to see noticeable growth in our quads, right? Uh, we can drive progression there. Just doing some hin hip hinging and some knee flexion, so some kind of hamstring curl, will be enough to maximally develop our hamstrings. And the only consideration I might make is if we're growing our legs uh, without the presence of a deep free squatting motion, we might be missing out on some potential adductor growth. So I might add in some direct adductor training via the adductor machine, AKA the good girl machine, the leg closing machine, whatever the hell you wanna call it. Um, I think that because your adductor magnus is such a big part of your leg, it's very important to the appearance of having large legs. So if your goals are aesthetic based, big legs is part of the aesthetic you want to achieve. Maximally hypertrophying your quad and your hamstring might not be enough. You also probably want to put in work to hypertrophy that adductor, which is a very large muscle. Um, the adductor magnus functions as a hip extensor in a very deep flex position, so it's going to grow quite a bit from deep squatting. But if we are not doing deep free squats, maybe we're doing uh, something else that's not quite as deep from a narrow stance, uh, we might not be maximally hypertrophying this motion just by, by squatting, so we're going to train it directly. Trying to get strong in the 12, 10 to 15 rep range, really pushing hard on it, even if it's embarrassing. Um, is gonna be probably worthwhile for you. That being said, what I would recommend is finding a free squatting variation that you hate the least and then getting decent at it. So usually if someone's okay at something, they hate something, they don't hate it anymore, right? We hate things we're bad at. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, a little bit of a chicken or the egg thing. Are we bad at it because we hate it or do we hate it because we're bad at it, right? And it kind of is a, is a never ending cycle. So find the one you hate the least. Uh, I would probably get decent at it. You start to like it a little bit. Doesn't have to be a high bar. Doesn't have to be a low bar. Doesn't have to be a front squat. It could be an SSB squat, right? Some kind of free squat, I would recommend getting decent at it just because it's a pretty helpful tool to have in your toolbox. But no, you do not need to uh, squat to get very significant degrees of leg development. Now, from a strength perspective, I'm going to leave people who are training for athletic goals, such as jumping and sprinting. Uh, that's a totally different video. I'm not gonna touch on that in this one. Um, yes, yes, squatting is helpful, but no, it's not absolutely necessary for those goals. We're talking general leg strength. So usually when people talk about leg strength, they do not mean uh, the peak contractile force of your muscles. Right in an exercise science setting, what might what this what this might be is uh, you sit in this little machine, you basically kick into a pad as hard as you can, you flex, you flex, you flex, you flex, you get a peak knee extension force, and that tells you the contractile property of your quads. This is not what people mean in practical application when they talk about having strong legs. Usually, they mean. Uh, having strength in your legs that's able to carry over to a wide variety of tasks, whether it's pushing your car out of a ditch, picking up and carrying something heavy, uh, squatting something up from the ground, like lifting it up, right? So that is what strong legs means to most people. And I would tell you that, uh, well, yes, it is possible to get pretty strong legs without squatting. It's way harder. It's way more roundabout uh, because squatting because you're moving your body through space, it's challenging your balance, it's challenging your proprioception, and it's training through a full range of motion, uh, is going to have a greater degree of transference to a wider variety of tasks than something where we're kind of less athletically challenged like a hack squat, right? So if someone was preparing for a strongman contest and there's no squat in that strongman contest, I would still tell them to squat on a weekly basis because squats are going to make you better at yoke. It's going to make you better at farmers. It's going to make you better at truck pull. It's going to make you better at push press. 
Uh, it's just going to make you systemically stronger. And any task that someone might talk about strong legs being helpful for, it's going to carry over to all of those things. Now, on the other side of the coin, if someone only did hack squats, I don't necessarily know if that's going to have the same degree of transference to when they go to push press their log or when they go to do the truck pull or when they go to walk with the yoke. I don't think I can tell you just in my anecdotal experience, it's going to have the same degree of transference, right? So usually when people talk about strength, they mean across a wide variety of tasks. Uh, obviously, if we mean strength in terms of back squatting power, we need to back squat to maximize that. But if we're also talking about a wide variety of tasks, yes, you could build up very strong legs with walking lunges, leg extensions, hack squats, um, and then practice these events and be pretty good at them. But it's very roundabout right? We have a tool that's going to have a high degree of transference to a wide variety of things. I would recommend, just like we talked about in the bodybuilding answer, finding a free squat. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't really doesn't matter what it is that much, but finding the one you hate the least and then getting decent at it, it's going to have a wide degree of transference and it's a simple route to the final destination. In both cases, it's not necessary, but it is a pretty simple route to, the, to having strong legs. Uh, from the from the perspective of explosiveness, you know, jumping, sprinting, um, it's still quite helpful. Is it necessary? No, but it's a pretty quick way to get to the point of diminishing returns, right? So if we get stronger, um, our vertical is going to go up. If we get stronger squat, our vertical is going to go up till a point where basically it won't it won't have as much direct transference anymore. Um, and, but reaching that point is very important and helpful for young athletes or athletes in general, right? And just getting your squat up is a very simple, measurable way to get to that point of diminishing returns. And then all you have to do is maintain. This is my personal philosophy. Someone might disagree with this, but I find that if you just increase your squat to a certain point, you're going to see more and more on-field performance until a certain point. Then we know we've hit that point of diminishing returns and then we maintain it. So again, it's not the only way to get there, but it is a very simple route that I urge people towards because complexity usually doesn't lead to consistency. So thank you for watching my video. Uh, please let me know if you disagree. This is not something I have the strongest feelings in the world on, so you might be able to sway my opinion.